And welcome back YouTube, this is BoosterBoxBuster here with another video. Today I got for you a Unikeep Binder Review. Now the Unikeep company reached out to me and wanted to know if I wanted to do a review of their Yu-Gi-Oh! branded traded card binders. I said I would definitely be up for that because I love trading card binders and I'm always interested to see the new ones that are available out there. Now these binders are classified as a hard shell durable binder with snap locking latches that keep all cards safe from dirt, dust, water, and other elements. They have a heavy duty metal ring and each binder comes with 25 9 pocket archival safe and PAT tested acid free trading card pages. Now as the time of this video, you can get them for about 20 bucks on the Unikeep website or on their Amazon page. And you get everything that you see here. You get the binder and 25 nine pocket pages. Now that the description of all these are out of the way, I want to go over some things that I really love about these binders and some things that uh some criticisms I have, let's just call it at that. First thing I want to know, I absolutely love the design of these particular binders. This one has that classic Yu-Gi-Oh card back style. It's called the Vortex. Instead of being the brown and black, it's that blue, black, and white. Very lovely. Very reminiscent of Yu-Gi-Oh. It has Yu-Gi-Oh written in Japanese. Trading card collection underneath it. Very cool. That's the side of it. This is what it would look like if you get it brand new, sealed with the Unikeep uh, casing on it. And this one I personally love a little bit more. I know it doesn't have that classic Yu-Gi-Oh feel, but it, it's described as a red honeycomb. I think it's super cool looking. You can almost call it like a like a chain link fence in front of like maybe some sort of burning abyss or you know just like. A really cool like Terminator scene just a really cool uh, unique design to it I like it quite a bit this is what the side looks like and this is what the back of it looks like you could easily tell because this one which is the front no name has a barcode on the back on this side it has Yu-Gi-Oh! in Japanese trading card collection so you won't get confused on which way is supposed to be up and which way is supposed to be down. Another cool thing I love, the hard case shell. It's very durable. Keeps your cards from getting dust on them, which is always a major issue. Keeps them from getting water damaged. Let's say you're using this as your local trading card binder. You're at the table, someone spills some water. The first thing you're going to go for is to save your deck. And then you're going to want to grab your trading card collection on top of that. But by that time, it might be too late. With this, it'll keep it dry as a bone on the inside. Another great thing about this. They stack super well on top of each other. I absolutely love that fact. Uh, you don't have to worry about... Uh, kind of flipping the binders back and forth for the regular style. So that is another particularly nice feature. Another thing is you can kind of do a little bit of shaky. Maybe someone's careless, a friend or something, and they accidentally carry it upside down. How dare they? Um, you don't have to worry about the cards completely sliding out and your collection scattering all over the floor, up for grabs at the local game shop. And another great thing about this is it's made in the good old US of A. So for those 
who live in the U.S. of A, you're supporting a local business, and that is always a great thing, especially in these hard times. Now let's get to the inside of the binder. As you can tell, it's nice deep on the inside, so you can store more than the 25 pages that they start you with. This metal ring has a very satisfying snap sound, and it locks back in place fairly easy without too much force. The pocket pages themselves are nice, very clear, crisp, and durable. The, there is a few issues with them, but I will go into detail on that a little bit later here. And the other great thing that I want to say is they hold not just Yu-Gi-Oh size cards, as you're going to see here, with some cards from my collection. But they also hold regular size or standard size cards as they're called, like Magic the Gathering size, which Naruto happens to be. And Yu Yu Hakusho also happens to be the standard size as well. Another great thing, let me grab that card here quick. About these pages is although it is a bit of a snug fit they can hold a uh, single sleeved standard size cards it is a little bit snug but it does fit in there quite nicely uh, if you're using uh, perfect sleeves you'll have no problem and as you've seen with the early pages of the Yu-Gi-Oh cards here, uh, standard sleeved Yu-Gi-Oh size cards fit like a glove and it is fantastic. I love that. And even with that little bit of shaky and upside downness, they stayed in their pockets pretty dang well. You didn't have to worry about them sliding all out inside the binder too. So that is another plus. And the last uh, plus that I definitely want to give this is you don't have to use the page protectors that they give you. Give me one second here. Apologies for that awkward silence. They fit uh, I just happen to have some Ultra Pro Platinum binder pages. They also work really well with some of their competitor pages. As you can tell, no plastic on any of the sides poking through, just for proof. So those are the things that I love about this binder. So if you don't like the pages that they give you, you can use your own to swap it out with. I love that. Now there are some criticisms that they have about this binder. And the best way to build better product is to learn from criticisms and uh, to take it from there. So I, I do want to... Message, or I do want to announce some things that I do have concerns about things that I don't particularly like. First thing, and this is probably the most minor problem out of them all. Let me just cycle through this real quick. On the very back page here, or I should say on the back of the binding itself, it's very hard to see, but there's some very light... Uh, embossing where some plastic marks kind of stick up and that could be a very big well maybe not so big but 
a kind of an issue if you have cards on the very last page you have quite a bit in there there is a possibility that that raised up piece of plastic there could indent one or two pages of the cards here damaging uh, this particular slot and this particular slot of that card you're going to have like a little indentation and that is no good for serious collectors that is easily uh, shaved off you could probably shave that off pretty easy with a exacto knife or you know some sort of sharp but not too sharp of a knife because you don't want to accidentally cut too deep and then you know rip the entire back off just till it's nice and flush that's something that I would I'd probably instead of uh, having this embossed what I would do is just ha have either a sticker or just print it directly onto the page itself instead of uh, having it embossed like that. Like I said, it's just because the weight of cards, because trust me, when you get a lot of weight on cards, you know, it, it adds up quickly. You know, you get 100 pages in here full of cards, it's going to press down pretty heavily and those back cards are going to get indented. So with that out of the way, the other issues that I have with this particular uh, binder is I'm not quite sure how durable these uh, plastic latches are. I'm not going to lie, it feels like if you play with them too much or if you uh, abuse them too much, they could probably easily tear or rip and once that goes, it's kind of hard to keep this thing latched unless you use tape, and at that point you're better off just using a regular binder. So the, the latch durability concerns me over time, especially if you're using it as like a regular trade binder. If it's more for just archival, you know, take out the collection once in a while, maybe add a card, maybe trade a card here, here or there, it's probably going to last quite a while, but... I probably wouldn't use this as a regular everyday trade binder just because of the possibility of these latches uh, ripping off or becoming unlatchable. The next thing that I have the issue with actually comes with the plastic pages themselves and it's a fairly large issue and that is it's gonna really be hard to see on camera but you see how it's 100% just pure uh, goes to an edge with no sort of curve on both the top and bottom of the uh, pages themselves. On your Ultra Pro one here, you see it has a little bit of a curve kind of at the edges and I don't know if Unikeep makes these themselves directly at their plant, or if they outsource it to a, a different United States company, but uh, whoever does it would definitely be, uh, they would benefit from kind of creating that little bit of a curve that the Ultra Pro one has because the edge of these plastic sheets does get caught on the metal ring uh, snap feature. And as you can tell, it's very hard to see, but you can kind of see it right now. It's less so because I have it open. Let me snap it up there for a true visual effect. You see it doesn't lay flat, it kind of catches on the very edge of that metal snap ring. And uh, that causes the pages to not lay flat inside the binder, which could cause potential damage to the cards, to the edges of the cards in those particular uh, slots. And that is one big issue, so thankfully you don't have to use the pages that you get, you can replace them with your own. So that does save that issue from uh, cropping up there. 
Now the last issue, and this is probably the biggest elephant in the room, is they use C rings, or the, the classic standard rings, instead of D rings, or slanted D rings. Now this, for people who take collecting cards seriously, is going to be a no-go. They are going to not buy this because they want the D-ring binder instead of the C-ring. And why is that? Especially when you get a... There's one reason. When you get a lot of weight and you fill up the binder, the back pages and the front pages will curve to that C-ring damaging all the cards in the uh, column closest to those rings. Now that's no good for any collector. Now of course you could fill a bunch of dead air is what I call it or just use a whole bunch of empty plastic pages but that's a whole bunch of waste of space and a waste of your uh, product that you could be using to store more cards. Uh, in my opinion, I would uh, create that little bit of a curve or a little bit of a cut so the pages could lay flat and change out the C-ring to the D-ring for future products made in this line by Unikey. That is my criticism. Um, they, that D-ring, or that C-ring not being a D-ring, really does damper the product in my opinion. It really does bring it down almost a full two points on my point scale. Honestly, I really love the hard shell, the easily stackability, the fact that it comes with 25 pages so you don't have to uh, provide your own, but you can swap them out with your own if you want to, so that's a flexibility. It keeps out dirt, water, grime, all that stuff. That's fantastic. But the D-ring issue is going to be an issue that serious collectors are not going to buy this product for. With all that said, I have to give this a solid 6.5 out of 10. And honestly, if they switched out the D-ring, or if they switched it to a D-ring, sorry, I'm talking over myself again, it would easily rank an 8 to an 8.5. That D-ring really makes that much of a difference to hardcore collectors such as myself. Because I love this art. And honestly, I think I have a great use for this that's not going to be for my regular trading cards. What I think I'm going to do is put my Fate Grand Order wafer trading cards in here because they're made of a hard plastic and won't be affected as much by the uh, C-ring or the not laying flatness of these particular pages. So I have a use for them, but I don't know if they would be everybody's forte. With all that said, my final verdict is a solid 6.5 out of 10. If they ever change this to a D-ring in the future, that goes up to an at least an 8 out of 10. And if they cut the, uh, the side so these pages lay flat, in addition to the D-ring, it's probably going to be a 9 out of 10. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been an informative uh, outreach and a review of the Unikeep binders. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card binders. And like I said, they have some great plus sides, but they also have some very disadvantaged downsides for serious hardcore collectors. Uh, with all that said, this has been Booster Box Buster. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that uh, if you do decide to buy this product, that, the, that it was informative enough for you. And uh, I hope Unikeep also enjoyed this video for all the uh, compliments and criticisms that they uh, earned. I think that's all I have to say. We have the honeycomb and the vortex or Yu-Gi-Oh back style card as the options, and I think that that's that's all I'm going to say. This is Boost Backs Buster. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, 
If you want to see future content similar to this, hit that subscribe button. And most importantly, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this particular product, if it'd be something that you'd be interested in buying. This is Boosterbacks Buster, for the final time saying my name, signing out.